Hello and welcome to another edition of Cardiac Imaging Agora. In this edition, we will go over a case that will allow us to recognize and correct motion artifacts on specs. So all I'm gonna tell you about this patient is this is a 61 year old male who was referred for uh, a stress test. Uh, uh, this time it was a spec stress test, stress and uh, stress. So again, we uh, go through the uh, list that uh, we are now should be familiar with if you're watching our uh, videos. These are the steps we go through to review the images. The only step we're gonna omit here is the, uh, uh, the myocardial blood flow uh, step because this is not a PET, this is a SPECT uh, study. So of course, we always start with the, uh, uh, on the SPECT study with the uh, raw images uh, to review the uh, 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 patient's uh, heart position, uh, uh, motion, uh, extra cardiac activity, attenuation, diaphragm or breast attenuation. And you can see here immediately, this is the rest images, the patient was still and happy. On the stress images, you can see significant uh, uh, patient motion in multiple uh, planes. So not only the patient moved up and down, patient moved sideways and repositioned uh, himself during the uh, test uh, right here. Then we look at the, uh, as our center again, we do a spec CT on all the stress uh, uh, images. Rest images, we do only a regular spec and we don't do CT attenuation correction. On the stress images, we use the CT to get the maximum benefit from it and minimize radiation by avoiding doing a CT on the rest images. So what you can see here uh, right away, you can see uh, the heart here uh, uh, superimposed, the perfusion image is superimposed on the uh, transmission images. And uh, with that, you can see this uh, strange uh, activity right here, uh, basically uh, at the interface of the, uh, of the heart and the chest wall uh, on the left side, uh, and we'll go over, over this uh, soon. Uh, these are the uh, reconstructed uh, images. So we start with the rest on the bottom and the stress images on top. Again, the, we, are, we align the uh, uh, borders of the heart. We uh, try to eliminate as much as we can of the extra cardiac activity. Uh, and then we center this on the, uh, on the bullseyes here. And then we, uh, we process. So when we process the images, this is what we found. On the rest images in the bottom row here, you can see a complete uh, a donut or uh, bagel, full circle, no perfusion defects from apex here uh, to base uh, right here. Uh, very minimal, if anything, perfusion defect at the base uh, and the inferior wall, very consistent with uh, diaphragmatic attenuation. Uh, of course, on the stress images now, we have this uh, uh, strange appearance of the heart where we have these perfusion defects seen uh, in the septum here, in the lateral wall here, and we have this uh, intense activity uh, in, the, uh, in the apex. You can see it also right here in the vertical long axis images. And you can see it in the short axis images. Very hard to make, uh, make out what, uh, what to call these. Do we call uh, uh, basal ischemia, you know, of the inferior wall, anterior wall, and then sparing the apex? Uh, what, is, what is the situation here? You can see in the short axis, this is a very difficult uh, test to interpret uh, and we'll probably need more help. Uh, this are the, these are the same, uh, this is the same patient after uh, applying attenuation correction. Again, you can see that the animation correction helped a little bit in uh, uh, resolving some of these uh, uh, so-called uh, uh, perfusion defects or decreased counts at the base of the heart. We're preserving the counts in the apex. However, we still have a perfusion defect involving the septum uh, right here, right here in the uh, horizontal long axis, right here in the short axis, uh, right here you can see it all along in the short axis. And again, it makes it very difficult to, to, to call this study unless we want to call septal uh, ischemia because of the reversibility from rest to stress. Again, you can see it right here in the vertical long axis uh, towards the inferior septum. So we try to score this and you can see this is a, a complete uh, a mess or catastrophe. You have a, a rest images that are normal. You have stress images where you have this perfusion defect right here right here, very intense uptake in the apex, septal perfusion defect, and we apply attenuation correction. We correct some of the basal perfusion defects, but we don't, we end up with the worst perfusion defect in the septum, as seen here in the reversibility map 
it's, uh, it's a large area of reversibility, at least at face value, with a weird shape of the heart. So uh, with that, uh, 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 trying to read a study, you can read it this way, but I'm sure none of us is, will be comfortable with that, uh, with reading the study in this, in this fashion, given that this doesn't make sense from an anatomical standpoint, and the fact that we saw that motion artifact on the uh, raw images. So is this a motion artifact and how to correct for that? If we want to correct for that, can we apply software correction? So a lot of uh, software that are available uh, on the market uh, uh, with your toolbox, whatever toolbox you use, uh, in our instance, we use uh, 4DM spec, uh, that toolbox or Invia, that toolbox allow, allows for some correction in one uh, plane, but it's usually very hard to correct, correct when you have uh, motion in multiple planes uh, in the heart. And you might end up correcting a little bit, but you still have uh, some uh, problems as seen in this attempt to fix this uh, beautiful vase uh, that, uh, that was broken. So we, uh, uh, in this instance, uh, uh, this was done, this study was done yesterday. In this instance, I uh, asked the uh, technologist to go back and rescan the patient and try to make sure this time the patient did not move. And you can see this is uh, scan two right here as numbered here. And now the patient is still unhappy, no motion uh, seen. Uh, these are the uh, images from uh, the first uh, scan, a lot of motion, a lot of uh, uh, displacement of the heart. And this is uh, in the second scan after we detected that motion artifact that led to the, all these perfusion defects and uh, now the patient is not uh, moving, just side-by-side -side comparison for your uh, uh, visual uh, uh, interpretation. Then we go back to the, uh, now to the uh, uh, transmission and emission images. Now uh, the heart looks completely fine and there's no uh, activity here in the chest wall as we saw before. So now we know exactly where the heart is, the perfusion images and the uh, transmission uh, images. This is before we corrected, before we re-imaged the patient on the left-hand side, after we re-imaged the patient on the right-hand side, showing complete resolution of this artifactual increase of uptake in the chest wall. Now here are the images at rest, uh, post rescanning. This is rest at the bottom, stress in the middle, and stress with attenuation correction. Beautiful, normal study, complete resolution of this uh, artifact we saw before. The diaphragmatic attenuation that that's seen here, the rest images now, it's, uh, we have improved counts in the stress images, of course, because of a higher dose and hyperemia. And with the stress uh, attenuation correction, we have complete resolution of any of the defects. And now we have a complete a normal uh, perfusion circumferentially everywhere in, the, in all the segments. Uh, just to compare them uh, side by side, this is uh, rest, uh, this is stress in the middle, and now this is the old images when the patient was moving. You can see the impact of the artifact creating all these septum defects. So this shows you that uh, doing a quality assurance on the images every single time uh, can lead you to uh, uh, detect artifactual changes, uh, of course. And uh, in this instance, uh, the, the remedy for this is actually, uh, despite uh, the fact that we have a software to remedy some of the motion artifacts, the remedy in this instance is to uh, take the patient and uh, put them back on the camera and re-image them. Now we have a completely normal study, as you can see here from the polar maps uh, and from the uh, perfusion images uh, as displayed uh, here. Completely normal study, uh, we salvaged the study. So now we go back to the gated images, as we said before, uh, in a traditional uh, fashion, how we read our images. We look at the histogram uh, for rest on the bottom, stress on top. Uh, there is not much, uh, not much uh, ectopy here to talk about. Uh, ejection fraction is normal, the volumes are normal, complete normal contractility of all the chambers, uh, of all the left ventricular chamber, as well as the right ventricle, you can see it right here, uh, uh, clearly in the uh, horizontal and log axis. And then we go back to the CT images this time to just make sure there is no calcification of the coronary arteries or uh, masses in the lungs, uh, lung fields, uh, perihilar masses. Uh, again, this looks uh, fine, no CT uh, calcification. And now we, we generate uh, the report. So in our report, just part of the quality assurance measures uh, we do uh, to track uh, uh, what, what we're doing in our lab and how often do we do this. This will be coded as a rescan because we have to rescan the patient. We don't, of course, have to do another dose. All we have to do is rescan the patient. Um, 
uh, this is the time of the injection with 12 millicuries at rest, 35 millicuries post stress uh, for this patient, uh, and we uh, rescan them. So this is again a 61 year old uh, gentleman uh, who has risk factors for CAD, including hypertension, kidney disease, prior smoker. Uh, he comes in with some dyspnea and exertion uh, with uh, atypical uh, chest pain. Uh, this is the result of his uh, pharmacological uh, stress test uh, here. Uh, you can see uh, uh, the blood pressure and the heart rate at rest and post uh, pharmacological stress test injection. Uh, in the era of uh, COVID-19, we are not doing a treadmill stress test. Uh, so this patient was uh, switched to a pharmacological stress test. Ideally, he should have uh, undergone a treadmill stress test, which would have more uh, information about functional capacity, uh, METs achieved, and uh, uh, we can derive a lot of prognostic information from that. But this was uh, here in the era of uh, COVID-19. We do not do that. We're doing pharmacological stress testing with regadenosin. Uh, here are the ejection fractions uh, populated uh, by the, by the uh, software. Uh, again, you can see here uh, normal ejection fraction at rest and post stress, normal right ventricular function, uh, normal uh, polar maps, all zeros, uh, normal study, uh, no TID, uh, low risk scan, no coronary calcification, no prior study to compare it to. And you can see this is the conclusion uh, for this uh, study. A completely normal study that was salvaged because of uh, uh, our attention to details and reviewing uh, every part of the image acquisition, uh, the raw images that alerted us to a motion artifact. So when we saw them on the perfusion images, we were not surprised. The take home message for this uh, session is make sure uh, uh, you evaluate the perfusion images in the setting of motion artifact. Appreciate the steps you should take to correct the motion artifacts. Uh, some, uh, sometimes you can be lucky and you can correct these steps by, uh, uh, by a software uh, uh, remedy. Uh, in this instance, it was not uh, uh, feasible. And just remember, Technetium 99 uh, agents, uh, my view in this instance, they have a very long half-life uh, of about six hours. So actually, you do not uh, need to re-inject a patient uh, or, uh, or basically expose them to radiation. All you have to do is uh, figure this out before the patient leaves the lab uh, and look at the images. Therefore, if you find them, you can bring the patient back, put them on the camera, and rescan them. So it allows you to repeat the scan of the image because of the half-life of the Technetium 99 uh, uh, M agents. Uh, this, of course, can be done for both the rest images, if you notice uh, uh, this problem on the rest images, as well as the stress images. So before any patients, uh, before the patients leave the lab, uh, you should have a, a somebody or someone looking at these images and QAing them before the patients uh, quality assurance, uh, uh, perform a quality assurance on these images before uh, they leave the lab. Otherwise, you're stuck with the poor images and the artifact you have. And finally, integrate all these findings in a, a report that's clinically uh, relevant and uh, useful for the clinician. Again, thank you so much for uh, watching another one of our uh, sessions on Cardiac Imaging Agora. This is our website. Uh, hopefully you enjoy all our videos and we'll keep updating them uh, periodically. Uh, have a nice evening.